Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. My name is Brian. I'm one of the pastors at Calvary Chapel, Melbourne. I'm here with my wife, Katie. We are currently recording part three of a three-part series on how to read the Bible. In part one, we talked about excuses why people don't read the Bible. In part two, we answered the question, is the Bible trustworthy? Spoiler alert, it is. <laughs> so you definitely wanna check out those two videos. And in part three, we're gonna give some super practical application for how to actually read the Bible. So Katie, are you ready to dive in? I'm ready. So when we read the Bible, a great sort of template or format for reading the Bible is the acronym SOAP. And SOAP stands for Scripture, Observation, Application, Prayer. Right. So the Scripture part is pretty easy. When you read the Bible, you should be reading the Bible. Right. <laughs> so you start by actually reading it. Now let's move to observation. What does it mean when we say that when we are using the SOAP acronym, the next thing that we do is we use observation? What does that mean? Well, observation is, is really just that you are trying to understand what it is that that scripture is saying. What did the author intend for you to understand about that yeah. piece of writing? So there's a couple things you have to consider. You have to consider historical context. You have to consider the literary context. So there's going to be some things in scripture uh, that is going to be historically relevant to thousands of years ago, mm -hmm. but there's also going to be things that are extremely applicable to today. So the first thing we wanna do is just try to figure out what is the author telling us? Yeah, and that sounds a little bit complicated, but really the Bible was written on a ninth grade reading level. Most people should be able to read it. Mm -hmm. And when you're observing, you're just an explorer, you're an adventurer, you're a historian. You're just trying to say, what did the author originally intend this to mean? Exactly. Next, we move from observation to application. And in application, what we're really doing is we're trying to say, how does this text apply to my life today? Mm -hmm. And we believe the Bible is practical, that it can apply to your life. And so you're asking the question, how does it apply? And that might mean that there is a truth about God that God wants you to learn. That might mean there's a promise that God wants you to believe. There's a command that he wants you to obey. There's a warning he wants you to heed. And you're really just asking the question, how can I apply this to my life? Right. And the last thing is prayer. And we really believe that after you read the Bible, a great thing to do is respond in prayer. So scripture, observation, application, prayer. Pretty simple. Uh, also what we wanna do is we just wanna share a couple of quick tips as to how to read the Bible. So I think we have five quick tips. Uh, the first one, I'll tackle this one, is have a plan. Right. I think it's so important that people have a plan. You know, you hear mm -hmm. people sometimes opening up the Bible, sort of randomly pointing at one scripture mm -hmm. and kind of reading like that. Way better to start systematically reading the Bible. Yep. I think you should pick a book, start reading it, and then go through that book, and then pick the next book and start reading it from there. Have a systematic plan. And there's things like the Bible app that have a ton of plans that you can mm -hmm. read. You can Google Bible reading plans, have a plan. It helps you stay focused. It does so much. Next is pray first. What do you think about praying first? Yeah, well, I think the scripture talks about how God is the one who reveals the messages of the scripture. So I think before we even begin to read, we need to ask God for, for clarity and for wisdom and say, God, help me to First of all, understand what your word is saying. And second of all, what is it that you're speaking to me through this scripture? Yeah. So by starting with prayer, I think we're going to be able to really understand what God is trying to tell us so much better. Yeah, that's so key. The same Holy Spirit that inspired the Bible is the same Holy Spirit that lives in each and every Christian. Mm -hmm. And so when you're praying and asking God to reveal the scripture, the Holy Spirit that's living in you is going to help you Right. I always pray and ask God to reveal stuff before I read, and man, without fail, God answers that request. Absolutely, yeah. The third thing is really, really helpful, especially for people who are just getting started in their faith, and that is that a study Bible is super helpful. So do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I would love my study Bible. There are so many different options available to you. Um, I personally use the ESV study Bible, and it's just so great because there are those moments where there's pieces of scripture and you're like, I don't really understand what that's saying. Mm -hmm. And in a study Bible, there's there's so many notes yeah. and uh, side you know 
discussions and, and just different things from commentators that help you understand what it is that you're reading. And so having a study Bible can be hugely helpful um, with the application process as well. Yeah, that's so good. And one of my favorite things about a study Bible is that before every book, there's a little bit of context for that book. So you can read yeah. it and understand what's happening in this book before you start reading it. Yep. The next thing is memorize important scriptures. You know, the Bible talks a lot about holding God's word close and hiding it in your heart. And so as you memorize scripture, you're actually making the Bible, God's word, a part of you, a part of your mind, a part of your body. Wow, and yeah. so I'm super passionate about that because it really helps you not only to read it, but to make it a part of your life. Yeah. The last quick tip or quick thought is that it's an investment. It's an investment. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? It is. I mean, just like with anything else, when you jump right in at first, there's some parts that are going to come easy to you and there's some parts that are going to be difficult. Mm -hmm. And I think with reading the scripture, uh, it takes practice, you know, as the more you read, the more you become uh, attuned to the, the type of literature that it is and yeah. to understanding the historical context and things like that. And the more that you do it, the easier it gets and the more that God is going to be able to speak to you. So yeah. it is an investment. It's not going to happen overnight. You're just going to understand everything. But over time, it will become more clear. Hmm. Absolutely. And that's amazing. And it's, it's our hope that you commit to making that investment and that you really say, I want to make Bible reading a part of my daily life because I want God to speak to me. We hope this was helpful. Happy Bible reading. Uh, we love you and we're praying for you. So we hope this video was super helpful, especially in relation to you understanding that the Bible is trustworthy. If you want a few more resources, we've actually put a few books that have been helpful to us and our journey towards understanding that the Bible is trustworthy uh, in the description below. So check those out if you wanna learn more.